Hello my fellow chatterers and book lovers and anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is or you have got lost. Welcome everyone. I'm Chatty, welcome to my channel Chatty the Mad Chatter where I'm going to be chatting away madly about part six I believe we're on now. Yes, part six. I still don't feel convinced about that. <laughs> Read the title because I can't remember how many parts I'm on of my segmented study for the magical reason of Aurelium. So um, this is a readathon. Everything is in the description below, created by G from Book Roast. Go and check it out if you want more information. And if you want the start of my journey of this vlog, please see videos here. Um, I cannot edit on this channel. I have to do one rolling take because my laptop is too old to cope with the editing process. So I can't do a vlog in one nice video. So I just kind of one rolling take and we just do it in segments. So that's what this is. So cheers everybody. One shot, no editing. Clink, clink, clink. So, um, the last book that I um, have now finished reading, so the class that I have now finished is Astronomy. And this was for level D, which was Blood, yeah, Blood Moon. And for that, I had to read a book with red on the cover. And as you can see, the title of this book is Red, White and Whole. And we have got a lot of red in the cover of what looks like beautiful butterflies, but are actually uh, red blood cells. Um, and for further red evidence, if I take off the dust jacket, the cover is red. This is a middle grade novel in verse. Um, it's a historical novel, it's set in the 80s and it is by um, Rajani LaRocca. And um, the author has used a lot of her own experience within this book. Um, and she is also a doctor, I believe, definitely someone medical. Um, blah, blah. She went to medical school. She's, she's someone medical. I don't know if she is a doctor. It doesn't say doctor thing on there. But anyway, she's been to medical school. So the medical stuff in this is sound. Um, this is a story of um, Rhea, who is um, first generation American, and her parents are from India. And she is struggling with her identity of being on the weekdays, she's in school, it's very Western culture. And then at the weekends, she's surrounded by um, like the Indian community, and it's very Indian culture. And she's struggling with kind of like getting both of those worlds to meet, and kind of finding out where she fits in both of them and who she wants to be and what she wants to do. And alongside this, um, there is um, sort of like the backs that you get more information about her family and her friends and kind of her just starting to um, be, be wanting different things from her life. And, um, but also not wanting to let go of, of the current things as well. Like she loves her parents, she wants to make them proud, but she's worried that that might conflict with other things that she wants. And we also then have an illness in this book as well. I loved this book. Um, I love a novel in verse anyway, so I'm so pleased that I continued to enjoy this one. I found um, it, it was very easy to read um, and I felt it added to kind of the emotion of the book and um, there were some very kind of beautiful moments that kind of stuck out for me. Um, and it, I had a very big re emotional reaction to the book as well. And I think at the moment, that's all I can say. It has definitely strong themes of family. Um, there's friendship in here, self-identity, and also kind of like um, inner strength and love. And it is a lovely story. It's, it's a very beautiful story. Um, if you, <laughs> um, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a trigger warning now and kind of mild spoilers. So if you think this book sounds like it's up your street, like all of those things are ticking your boxes and you don't want to hear any more, then please use the timestamps wisely for when I'm talking about the next book. Um, if you think you might need a trigger warning for this book, I will give a trigger warning and then I will go on to talk about mild spoilers. So if you don't want the trigger warning because you want to know nothing about this, please skip ahead now. Um, so it has a trigger warning in this book um, for parent death um, and um, for um, leukemia. So if those are things that are too close to home and you don't want to read about, then give yourself a break for this book and, and pick it up when it feels right for you or don't pick it up at all if, if it feels too much for you. Um, 
and that is <laughs> that is all I will say in terms of of the trigger warning um if you now want mild spoilers I will go into some more mild spoilers um I really loved um like I said the um some of the language in this book and it is um the st Rhea's story of like her relationship with her parents I should have said another trigger warning as well but it, it, it's very mild though this one it but it does look at like the the effect of 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 um having an ill parent can have on you as a child um so it it does also touch on kind of um there is depression in here as well um but within that there are such strong bonds of love and family and even though the family is on the other side of the world just how strong that bond and, and love is um and it also does kind of touch slightly on um religion and how that can kind of uphold you um and also kind of confusion within it and how do you feel about things and things can still hurt um it's it's done really really well um this is i'm going to mild spoilers now as i'm talking about it i'm realizing that this is probably stuff that i should have said before <laughs> maybe i can do that in the in the full-on august wrap-up um i would say this is probably more just because of the themes in the book i would put this as more kind of like high end middle grade um but obviously it really depends on kind of the uh, emotional maturity of the child and what their preferences and things would be um I know that I would have been devastated as a child if I'd read this. <laughs> um, but as an adult, I can really appreciate it. But I know not all children um, would feel the same. I know one of my very good friends would have would have thought this was amazing and been fine with managing to cope with the bittersweetness of it, whereas I wouldn't. So it does really depend on that. Um, one of the lovely things about this is... Um, I'm going to see if I can find it. There's... Um, there's a chapter called Aerogram and just the way that, here it is. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to read Aerogram to you because I just think it's nice to share some of the um, the writings in, in books when we talk about them so you can appreciate it. So this is what it looks like. So it's laid out like that. And on this page, we've just got the final four lines. So it's, it's a page. Aerograms. Amma and Prima Auntie write letters to each other using aerograms. They are more than just stationary. Sky blue and folded into envelopes, like puzzles. They are secret treasure chests, brimming with words of love. Amma can spend an hour or more writing an amagram letter, and at the top of each one she writes special words, small prayers for safety. She creases the amagram carefully, seals it with her lips like a kiss. When I find an am uh, not an, I keep calling it an amagram, it's not an aerogram. <clears throat> She creases the aerogram carefully and seals it with her lips like a kiss. When I find an aerogram in our mailbox, I hand it to Anna straight away and watch her face light up as she takes it. She opens it carefully so she doesn't tear the precious words inside. She reads it silently to herself first, then reads it aloud to me. And it is like Prima Auntie is here talking to us both about what she is cooking, the new sari she bought, family gossip, weddings and holiday celebrations and a small piece of home has flown across the world and landed in Amma's hands. That last line I love so much. And there is another point in the book where that concept is repeated again and I love it even more and I was an emotional mess at that point. Um, I think Rhea is a lovely protagonist. You really feel for her. You feel for her pain. You feel for her, like the, the difficulty of not wanting to let down those you love, um, but also really wanting to kind of fit in with the world around you. Um, and it's explored so well and it's looked at from both sides and explanations are given and it's just beautiful. And the bittersweetness of the ending is, you felt it, you felt it coming and it's just how it's done is, um, I was just in tears. I was just in tears. And um, there's a way I think where, so I think child me would have wanted it done differently because I would need that to, to read and be okay with life. Um, but adult me 
appreciates how important this book is and someone struggling the same way that Reha has done, I think someone would find a lot of hope in this. And I think that everyone who has lost someone they love will find a lot of comfort in this. Um, so I just highly recommend it. It was just such a beautiful book um, and yeah, I, I really loved it. I really loved it. It's definitely, I'm definitely gonna be picking up again. Um, I think, and knowing the story now, I think I will kind of dwell on it more rather than we're racing through it <laughs> um, and just enjoying it more. But it's, I think it's also one that I would definitely kind of pick up just to read some of the, the, the separate sections. So I think with a graphic novel, um, it's telling a story, but it's telling it, it's not graphic novel, novel in verse. <laughs> Have I been saying graphic novel this whole time? I've no idea. Anyway, novel in verse. Um, I think you can kind of pick it up and it, it does feel like poetry. You can just give yourself like a, a small part of it to just to just look at and, and, and take away and just feel that particular moment. And I just think it's beautiful. So love this. Let's move on to what Piolas is going to be picking up next. What class is he going to be going for? Alchemy. We have studied level O, turning stone to copper, copper to silver, and silver now for level D into gold. For level D, you must read the final book in a series. And for that, I am going with The Last Enchantment by Mary Stuart, which is the final book in the Merlin trilogy, which is a historical fiction slash fantasy. So yes, I'm deciding to go for <laughs> The Last Enchantment by Mary Stuart um, because I really want to get that series finished off and read. And having just read the first chapter, I haven't even got a bookmark, um, but I have read... No, that's chapter two. There we go. I have read literally this much. I've just read the first chapter, but immediately is the right decision for me because I've just recently read The Hollow Hills so I want to finish this off while it's all still fresh in my brain and the writing is great as much as I was complaining about um The Hollow Hills kind of bothering me in terms of like um some misogynism I do really like the writing um and um I'm hoping that we have less in this book I don't know it's still the same era it's still the same author um, but I do, I do really enjoy the writing. I think the writing is lovely. And also what I discovered in this book that I wasn't aware of before, and I don't even know if mum's aware of, um, but this was gifted to her, um, in 1980, um, from Molly, Brian, Jane and Neil. And it says, happy Christmas. So I believe that was your auntie Molly, Natter, that gifted this to you in 1980 six years before I came into the world, how jolly. And this was um, published in 1979. So this was a brand new book, Christmas present for you, mum. So that's lovely. Uh, <laughs> um, that, I just enjoyed that. I love it when I find like little messages in books. I just think it's really nice. Um, so yes, I'm very keen to be reading this one. So we've already got a setup, picking up from where the last one went off. Um, Arthur, your legend, Arthur is now king. And we are now in the early reign of Arthur. So he's wanting to kind of keep this hold on his kingdom and prove that, you know, it wasn't just luck for his first battle. And he now needs to go and keep the threat um, further away. And he's going to go chase down um, and kind of get rid of uh, the other forces that he just fought off. Um, and that's his plan. So he's trying to prove himself. Merlin's got a task. Um, other characters in here have got other tasks. And I just, one thing I love so much about this is the map and the importance of the map is they mention places and they're on the map not all maps do that and I find it so frustrating because I need to know where people are <laughs> so he's already mentioned that they are going to be so Merlin is going to be going here so they at the moment are I can't remember exactly where they are but they're somewhere up here they're somewhere on the borders of um, what is now Scotland um, and Merlin's going to make this massive journey all the way down here his other friend has got to come here to Tintagel to take Arthur's mother over here 
and then um, they're going to be going over to here where in sort of Wales, it's kind of like Cardiff, um, I think it is, is Carillon, is Carillon the old name for Cardiff? Historians let me know. Um, so that's going to be where Arthur's going to like have his base seat. So I appreciated all of that being in the map so I can work out where everyone is. So keen to read this one, see how it goes. Um, it's going to be great. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know thoughts on any of the books I have mentioned, any books you've been reading recently that um, you have really enjoyed. What was the last book that you got really emotional about? I would love to know because you know I love a chat. Happy reading everyone!